beautiful Scorpio friends and welcome to your horoscope for December of 2020 where Scorps this is our last monthly horoscope together for 2020 so it's kind of special and significant and I just want to say thank you so much for letting me travel with you and you traveling with me through 2020 even if this is your first time visiting this channel or or doing a horoscope with me just thank you for being here and thank you for your time and your attention it is very very much so appreciated Scorpio this month the eat and greets will continue on. We've got planets changing signs. We've got an eclipse and those things are big deals and they are the setup for 2021. But we've also got some just delicious, learning, pleasurable eat and greets coming around. We've got Patricia Walsh coming this month. Kira Sutherland will be here. Ali Gully, Victor Oliver will be here to discuss Dragonic Astrology. Peter Burns will be here to discuss astrology and palm reading. We've got Sally Ducharme who will be here. Um, who else is coming? Rose Marcus will be here. Michael Bartlett will be here to discuss our maverick planet. So if you don't even know what that is or you're interested in learning more, we'll love, love, love to see you in the Eat and Greets. Remember, you can always see the Eat and Greets absolutely ad-free by joining me on Patreon. And when you join someone on Patreon, you also support the creator actually doing the work as opposed to if you just have premium. So things to think about as well. The uh, Patreon will continue to expand. I've got new content that's up and ready and available available for our Patreon members and it's exclusive to them. So I cannot wait to see you on Patreon if you'd like to join, even if you want to just stay right here on YouTube, which I fully support and watch those eat and greets and all other good content. You can find more stuff, more videos in the description box down below. Okay. All right, Scorpio, this month, like I said, major planets moving, changing signs, which is an indicator. It's a headline for us. We jump in and pay attention when that's happening. We've got our last eclipse of the year happening this month as well. So that automatically tells us we've got a six month investment in that particular energy. And whenever there is um, an eclipse, it always brings changes, brings, it always will bring in changes to home and work. So, it, you know, even though it's not happening in your home or work sector, just the nature of that vibration usually brings a little bit of change there. But ultimately, what's happening for you, especially at the beginning of the month, Scorpio, is that your second house is an area of focus. You're in what we call right now a financial peak in your particular yearly vibration of energy. And that is still very much so the focus as we're coming here into December and moving through. So it's a really nice kind of prosperous setup for you for sure. All right, let's talk about what's going on. So right here, as we come into the month on December 1st, we see Mercury entering into the energy of Sagittarius, just your next door neighbor here. So this lights up your second house space, the money house, how I make money, the money that I have, the budget that I keep, my values, my possessions, my self-esteem, the things of value live in this second house, including your creative skills that you're using to make money. But one of the other things that I think of with the Sagittarian energy specifically for you, because Sagittarius is the traveler, is that your money might be doing some traveling this month. And this may even be the course of what's happening over the next 30 days for you as you're finding your money is doing a fair amount of traveling and you're like taking a risk. You're involved with that money travel for sure, but it seems to be in a very positive but outside of your normal realm kind of way. Mercury here is helping you make decisions. Do you need to make a new budget? Do you want to learn about investments and in IRAs and passive streams of income? Mercury is going to help you communicate that, hear that, study that, make some decisions around this particular area, and definitely create a fair amount of conversation. Now, on the 13th, Mercury, that same energy that's here to help you, is going to go out of bounds. So when Mercury goes out of bounds, we get these high-flying ideas, but really... What that gives us an opportunity to do is say around your money, right? And maybe this even kind of new movement of your money a little bit, look out of bounds, look out of your normal place of how you make money. Look out of your normal sphere of people that you ask about money or how you connect with the idea of money or value or self-esteem. It may just be out of your normal bounds that you either spend that money or find solutions to this particular area of your chart. On the 14th, we're going to welcome that new moon solar eclipse, which is our six month investment into beginning something new in this money house. Okay. So in the energy of Sagittarius. So over the next six months, I'm telling you, your money is doing something really interesting, but I love that, you know, it, you're not as conservative with money, um, 
going into 2021 as I think that you were in 2020 and had to be. So there is a little adventure. There is some play. Maybe you're traveling with the family. I mean, the family's going to be a big deal. We're at the moon, right? So whatever it is, there's a little bit of expansion and very Sagittarian quality around your money. So take it out there. Find these ways that were maybe foreign to you to bring other streams of income into your life because what happens if all your regular streams fall out of your life? Have you made a protection plan for yourself? Those are things that I would think about here as well. Now, we also see on the 15th that we've got a busy day on our hands. Chiron is coming out of retrograde in the energy of Aries, which lights up your sixth house space. So daily routines, health, wellness, service to other people. If you are an employer, this will speak to your... Um, daily business functionings and your employees. This is also coworkers, so just things around work. But Chiron speaks to the hole in our soul, our great wound. In the energy of Aries, we've been working on our identity. Scorpio, is your identity different? What are the principles that are gonna guide your identity as you come out into this next year? Like, what? Are, how are you showing up? Who are you? Who do you know yourself as? And one prime example that I think of that's very like mundane but significant is, you know, let's just say that you you were working for a long time and now you're not. How does that, how has that touched or impacted your identity? If your children were babies and now everybody's going to college, how has this impacted your day-to-day -day moving and how you're bringing your identity into that? Because as Chiron is out of retrograde, it's time for you to start living that new identity, right? It's time for you to really be showing up, putting that thing in action and being like this advocate and warrior and having agency for yourself in this area of your chart. So one of the things I think of is if you're, um, if your health practitioners don't feel like they've been in alignment or you feel like you've needed to speak up with them in some way, shape, or form, you might be able to do this. But this also helps you help other people with the formation of their identities and bringing that out as well because you've hurt that way, you've struggled with it. So it gives you a space of compassion and understanding on how to help somebody else bridge that gap as well. So if you've got that employee that is struggling or you've got that kid in your day-to-day -day routine and they just seem to not be able to get on it, remember they are resetting their identity just like you are. So find that space of relation or you know an investor or something like that. Also on the 15th, we've got Venus moving into that energy of Sagittarius. So now magnetizing this money area. So you see your money area, the second house is actually very good. It's got good vibrational energy happening to it this month. Now in the general reading, your second house being ruled by Sagittarius tells us that the ruler of Sagittarius is Jupiter. Jupiter is going to change signs this month. So we're going to look at an indicator of where that maybe money is going as well. And the fact that your money is changing just based on the, the, the sign that the ruler of that house is also moving on. So first, though, we get to the 17th where we see Saturn moving into the energy of Aquarius. Now, this is going to light up your fourth house. You have spent two and a half years with Saturn working on this third house, your mind, your brain, the way that you communicate, decisions that you're making, things with your siblings, buying, selling houses. I mean, all of that, the blog, the book, it's all been being highly refined with Saturn there. But now as Saturn moves into the energy of Aquarius, the family just comes so into focus or the home, home, family, real estate, property, your roots, your legacy, the things that you're leaving there, the women in your life become prime or parents become prime in your crystallization right now. And one of the things I do think of is that, you know, with Saturn here, maybe truly your family is just older, right? And so it's just older, so you're going to tend to it a little bit differently. But I also would tell you, look back between March and July of this year, what was changing for you around home that became a really significant part of the story? And you'll be probably working on things that look just like that over this next two and a half years, okay? Now on the 19th, Jupiter, your financial planet also jumps into the energy of Aquarius. So in that fourth house, so you see right there, even in your money, it gives us this indicator that home or on home things may be where you're taking this adventurous risk or expansion with your money in some way. Because certainly Jupiter in the fourth house wants to expand and wants to teach and expand the wisdom of this fourth house area.
On the 20th, we see Mercury coming into the energy of Capricorn, so your third house space. You've been crystallized and refined to the gods in this area because Saturn and Jupiter have worked on this for so long for you, okay? So now as you're making decisions in this particular area, you know, you're doing it a very Capricorn way. Is this productive? Is this organized? Does this help me achieve? Do I want to study this thing? Do I want to teach this thing? Um, do I want to sell this property? The third house is phenomenal for real estate. So it's a great time for you to be buying or selling a home, you know, based on the general. Make sure you check that against your chart. So this is something that you can consider in that mercurial energy that it is really here getting you mentally organized and prepared for better um, more organized business that helps you to achieve down the road and even better communication as well. I think that Mercury in your third house, December could be very, very busy in terms of communication. Of course, for many people, you'll be celebrating a holiday or just even if your holiday is the end of the calendar year, cards and food and dishes and conversation could be very much so a part of this. Now on the 21st, another busy set of energies happening on that day. First of all, we've got the sun now coming into the energy of Capricorn. So we've got busy Mercury over here getting you productive. But now we've got the sun bringing light, heat, life, and vitality, motivation. There's a movement. We've got Booyah over here in the third house space. So you're going to spend the next four weeks getting your mind getting your paperwork, getting that book, getting your schooling or your children in education or your education, your thoughts, your words, your siblings in order, right? Like it gets serious when we get into Capricorn energy because we need to get organized so that we can move forward on solid foundation. So the sun will welcome that in. And regardless of where you are in the world, this sun movement also tells us we're welcoming in a solstice. In the United States, we'll be having the winter, but our Aussie friends will be having summer. So whatever it is, wherever you're at, you're having a solstice. So welcome, right? And that is our indicator of a new beginning in this area. <clears throat> new ways, fresh starts, fresh ideas, fresh energy, that is happening here as we get ready to change and move into a new season of life. We also have on the 21st, the Saturn and Jupiter conjunction. We've been talking about it all year. We've been hearing about it for years and it is here and it is ready as they come together in the energy of Aquarius, solidifying a new 20 year journey for you in your home zone, at home with the family. This is a big change. This is your great mutation. Now, Saturn and, and Jupiter are our social planets, right? They govern the way that we do things out in the world. But this also is, I think, your opening and your welcoming to mutate your family and get it ready to go out in the world. Your home, this is the first home we have. So your psychological foundation, maybe even some cleaning out of home. You're a Scorpio. What do you need to detox? What do you need to let go of? So that home can really come to this next level. It moves from this place as well of being very earth energy, very grounded, has to be very stable into this energy of there's a little bit more space to play for ideas, for travel, for networking, for this idea of movement, of higher learning, higher experiences that now become available for you in this particular area. I will tell you, if you study things like real estate or any of those kinds of things around home, you could find that this energy as you mutate literally turns you into something else. Maybe you start flipping houses, you become a realtor, you, you do something <clears throat> that takes you to the next level with this great mutation in your life. As we close out this month on the 29th or 30th, just depending on where you live, we'll have a full moon happening in the energy of Cancer, and this is going to light up your ninth house space. Now, the full moon says that something needs to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted, so we're going to create a shift. The energy of Cancer, again, has me coming back home for you, home or the women in your life, your parents, right, the family union, something in that is maybe needing an adjustment. And where, like how, where do we see it show up? Ninth house, publishing, marketing, broadcasting, travel, expansion, higher learning, higher education, training, um, different languages maybe that are being spoken, legal things, immigration falls up here. 
morality. You know, maybe are you just also at a different place in your life where in your family unit, you are all communicating at a higher level. Your faith with your family is different. Whatever it is in that family, home, Cancerian energy, I think the question here is ultimately, in your ninth house doings, do you feel nourished? Do you feel secure? Do you feel supported? That's going to be a big question to answer and to shift and pivot maybe as we have this full moon and let it close down 2020 for us. All right, Scorpios, I think it is going to be a busy, deep breath. Thank goodness things are moving kind of month. Your ruling planets are out of retrograde, which is always just a hot headline to keep up with as well. So there's a lot to be able to get done, but ultimately remember too, each month we have to take just one day at a time, but this is the setup for moving into 2021 as well. All right, my beautiful Scorpio friends, like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I love you so much. And I just cannot wait to walk with you through 2021 as well. Bye, everyone.